Okay, so now let's talk a little bit about the history of Ireland. So in 8000 BC, the first people arrived in Ireland, okay? Ireland was this small island that was covered in forests and when the first people arrived, and of course we came and we cut them all down. Uh, but yeah, so that's what it looked like when the first people arrived. And back in this time, it probably was very cold, so is now today still. Um, and then in 1200 BC, the Celts arrived and the Irish language evolved. Okay, so the Celts were kind of a European group um, that came from Germany and France. And some people even say they came from the north of Spain. And they came up to Ireland and kind of separated a little bit. And the languages then evolved. There are four Celtic languages and there's Irish have we talked about before and then there's Scots Gaelic these two are quite similar and then there's Welsh in from Wales and Breton in the northwest of France and um, those two Welsh and Breton are kind of similar too okay and then in 387 AD St Patrick arrives in Ireland okay so St Patrick is obviously the patron saint of Ireland he came from Wales, okay? He was captured and taken to Ireland and he was a shepherd uh, in west of Ireland looking after, he was basically kind of a, a slave, but he brought Christianity to Ireland before St. Patrick. There was a kind of pagan religions um, kind of that you find all around the world really, okay? They kind of worshiped um, the sun and this type of thing. Uh, so, yeah, when St. Patrick came, there are many myths about him uh, chasing the snakes out of Ireland and things like that. Uh, but really what he's famous for is bringing Christianity uh, to Ireland. Okay, in 795 AD, then the Vikings arrived. Okay, so yeah, you've heard of the Vikings, right? They came from Sweden and the nor northern countries up there. So they came and asked uh, and some of them settled, right? The idea was to plunder and take everything, but some of the Vikings, they settled and they founded uh, the city of Dublin around uh, 1000 AD. Um, and you can see the, the walls, you can still see the Viking walls in Dublin today. And then in 1169 AD, the Normans arrive. Okay, they came from nor Northern France. Uh, so these people came. And yeah, they, they kind of mixed in with the Irish people as well. So you still see people with uh, Norman names today. Usually it has the, the prefix of Fitz. So there's often a lot of people with Fitzgerald, Fitzpatrick, okay? You can see this name like Fitzpatrick, this kind of mix between the Normans and the Irish that were there already. In the 1600s then there was the Ulster Plantation, okay? So at this point, you know, around 1200 uh, AD, the, Ireland was under the control of the British Empire, right? But the, the British Empire were having a lot of problems with the Irish people because uh, they were rebelling and they weren't happy about this. So they had this idea to put lots of uh, British people into the country. So they did this uh, all around the country, but especially in Ulster, in the north part of Ireland, okay? Um, and that is the reason that uh, you have many people that even still today, they um, associate with b being British. Okay, there's also Oliver Cromwell. Okay, and the next event is the Great Famine, in my opinion, one of the most important parts of Irish history. So, um, basically, the Irish really depended on the potato because... Um, People thought it was a good idea to just keep planting more and more potatoes because uh, it was very good for your health and very substantial meal that you can get from potatoes. But there was a problem, there was a disease in the potatoes called the potato blight and all of the potatoes um, were bad so they couldn't eat them. So in this case, uh, lots of Irish people went starving, they were very hungry and one million people emigrated to England or to the US on these kind of big ships and that took people away and one million people died. So it's actually quite interesting that Ireland is one of the only countries in, in Europe where the population has never recovered since this. Uh, before this time, maybe 1830 or something, the population was about 8 million. 
So even now today in a fast growing country, there are only 5 million people in Ireland. The next event was the Easter Rising. So there are many, many rebellions in Ireland over all this period of time, rebelling against the English control. Uh, but this one it was kind of a turning point. So there weren't that many people in this uh, rebellion, but uh, the, the, the part that happened was the, the English reaction. So they shot all of these people and executed them in Kilmainham jail um, just after this event. So what the plan was to have an uprising against the English government um, during Easter in 1916. And, you know, they, they had no chance of winning. Okay, the, the power of the English um, army, there was no chance of, of, of winning, right, of setting Ireland free. But they did it anyway, and you know, eventually Irish people kind of came together and thought that, uh, wow, these people really care about Ireland and really want uh, to be free from England. Uh, and then there led to more trouble, more problems, and Irish independence um, was granted in 1921. So at this point there was the War of Independence, another war against against the English uh, occupation of Ireland. So, you know, this was kind of a lot of war period after World War I as well. So Irish people kind of thought this was a good time to fight against the English army because their soldiers were depleted after uh, World War I. So uh, there was this going on. And of course, many the Irish, both sides kind of were, you know, very much struggling and they signed this agreement to s separate the North and the South. Uh, of course, some Irish people didn't agree with this and other people thought this was a good first step. So they had a kind of a civil war after that. So the country um, had more war after that. Really the, the stages of independence kind of came slowly. It wasn't really like one day that, whoa, there's an independent country. Um, you know, even until 1947 then was kind of, they took out this part of the, the, the clause that the Irish politicians had to say, oh, we swear to the Queen. That was only taken out in 1947, uh, so they didn't have to do that anymore. So it wasn't really like one, one day that, um, so that's the reason we don't really have an Independence Day in Ireland, but people celebrate uh, the Easter Rising as kind of the start of independence. In 1970s was the Troubles in Northern Ireland. So this kind of started in 1969 um, with, uh, the, there was lots of marches, uh, peaceful marches um, against um, the government in Northern Ireland and the British government because uh, there was quite difficult for Catholic um, people to get jobs and it was kind of an unfair society, so people were protesting against this. And um, then eventually this led to different organizations like the IRA uh, on the Catholic Republican Irish side. They all kind of came together. And then the Protestant um, uh, British side. So there are kind of two sides. And still today, people still feel this separation um, of these two sides they had their own organizations as well. So they were kind of fighting uh, against each other. In the 1980s then um, in Ireland was kind of a period of slow economic growth and emigration. Ireland has a long history of emigration. That's why you find Irish people all around the world. The 1990s then was kind of the start of a big growth spurt in the economy in Ireland. The country started to change, started to become more liberal and uh, the Catholic Church had less of a control over the country. 2000s it was a continuation of the Celtic Tiger and the economic crash in 2008. Okay, so of course every country really had a problem in 2008, 2009, but Ireland suffered a lot. And uh, Ireland is a small open economy. And with that, there's a lot of money coming in, money going out and uh, for that reason, Ireland kind of does very well in good times and does very badly in the bad times. So um, that's what happened in 2009. We got ourselves in a lot of trouble. And Ireland today is a modern, liberal, inclusive country with a focus on jobs. 
uh, an investment from overseas. Okay, so this has worked for us in the past, this uh, investment, especially from the United States with um, all their multinational companies um, that have helped to grow Ireland into a modern economy. And uh, this is kind of the, still the focus of the Irish government to create jobs 